Hey, it's Rusty. Thanks for tuning in to Burning Cereal. July 4th, just right around the corner. What do you do if you don't have a smoker or a barbecue? I can tell you what you do. You make barbecue ribs in your Instant Pot. If you remember, I did this once before in a slow cooker six or seven years ago. Today, we're going to make them in the Instant Pot. And what we're going to be using, ribs, pork ribs. I happen to get these at Costco. This time we're gonna use an apple juice base. Last time when we did it in the slow cooker, we used Coke. This time we're gonna use an apple juice. A Little bit of apple cider vinegar, some liquid smoke. Just like last time, we're going to coat them in barbecue sauce and then put them under the broiler of our oven to go ahead and caramelize that sauce. We're gonna put all this together. It's gonna to be as easy as So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put our ribs inside of the Instant Pot. Now, again, you saw that I had two different pieces of meat. Uh, I bought these from Costco. This one still has the membrane on it. That's this right here. And this, I took the membrane off. And we'll be able to see which one we like better. So just put them in the um, Instant Pot, just like this. You can coil them up however you like. This is just the way that we're gonna do it. Now we're gonna go ahead and add the liquid to this. So next thing we're gonna add is one cup of the apple cider vinegar, right down the middle. quarter cup of liquid smoke. Now, as we add the apple juice, we don't want to fill it completely to the top. We want to go about one inch down from the top because we need a little bit of space for the pressure to build. So I just eyeball it. If you're doing one rack, it'll take about 64 ounces. If you're doing two like this, it's gonna take considerably uh, a smaller amount, but I just eyeball it. So about half the, my first knuckle on my index finger. So that's probably about 40 ounces of liquid, roughly. Um, but again, eyeball it. You wanna make sure that you leave space for the pressure to build. Uh, this is all we need. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to put the lid on, set it to ceiling, set the time, and we're off to the races. So now we got the ribs in here, we got the liquid in here, the top is on, the valve is set to ceiling. Now we're just gonna set the timer and let it go. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit pressure cook, change your time. I'm gonna go 18 minutes because I want it to have a little bit more pull. If you want it to fall off the bone completely, go to 21, 22, somewhere around there. But at 18 minutes, I think we're gonna be good. Now, don't forget, it's gonna take a little while for this to come up to pressure. So this whole process is probably gonna take somewhere around 40 minutes. Once it's complete, we're gonna to wanna to let this do a natural release for 10 to 12 minutes. And then we can go ahead and um, evacuate the pressure after that. All right, so the total process, um, I'm 15 minutes of natural. Uh, release right now. The total process from pressurization until now was just about an hour. Um, now we're going to release the steam. Um, I recommend that you put something over the top because this is uh, quite a steamer when it comes out.
All right, so we released the pressure. Um, as you saw, we started right around f at the 15 minute mark. It took about nine minutes to release all that pressure. Um, word of warning, there's a lot of liquid inside here. So I highly recommend that you just don't flip open the valve and let it go because a lot of liquid and steam will come out. Um, I left this towel up on top. Uh, that's probably the, the smarter way to go. Um, once it's done, the pressure's off. We're gonna turn it. Smells great. And don't forget, we did have the one on the outside with the membrane still on it. The one on the inside, we took the membrane off. So let's go ahead and pull these out of here and let's take a look at them. So I can tell, and you're gonna be able to tell in just a second, um, the inner rack of ribs, I can see the bones, the bones are pulling out. So when I pull this out, they may just fall apart. So let's see. Yeah, they're coming apart already. You can see the bones are coming out. Um, that's why I left the, the membrane on, on this other one. So let's pull this one out. It's the one that we left the membrane on. And it is more into one piece. The one with the membrane off, super, super tender. You can see that the bones are just literally coming right out. Some people like that, some people do not. If you're one that likes the bones to stay in, leave the membrane on. If you want it fall off the bone, take the uh, membrane off. You can also reduce the time. We did this at 18 minutes. You could probably reduce it down to 16. I wouldn't go any lower than that though. So. What we're gonna do is we're gonna let these cool off for just a second, then we're gonna sauce them up and put them underneath the broiler. So I've already basted the back side of it um, with barbecue sauce, but this is the front side. And again, you're just gonna load it up with whatever barbecue sauce you want, with as much barbecue sauce as you want. If you like it with a ton, put a ton. If you like it with just a little, put just a little. This part is entirely up to you. And what we're doing is we're putting this barbecue sauce on and then we're gonna go hit it in the broiler. And I will explain what the broiler is if you don't know in just a moment. But we're gonna cover these liberally with the barbecue sauce. And then when we do put it in the broiler, you wanna watch it because broilers run in 500 plus degrees. So you're only gonna put it under there for somewhere between three and five, maybe three and six minutes. And it's really just to caramelize this barbecue sauce. So let me finish this up. I'll go throw them in the uh, broiler. And the next time we'll be eating. Okay, so they're out of the oven. Um, I waited a little while for them to kind of cool off, but I didn't really wait that long. They were in there for six minutes, um, which in my opinion is a perfect amount of time. So I don't want to wait any longer. These are probably still boiling hot, but I'm going to take a bite anyway. Um, oh yeah, they're definitely still warm. Let's oh, I'm burning myself, but I don't care. The little bones are coming out. Oh my God, that's hot. Oh, that's hot. Oh, that's hot. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. 
It tastes really good though. Bones are coming right out. Seriously, if you don't have the ability to barbecue or put a smoker, this, this is a very, very close substitute. Um, go ahead and make this. Make it every 4th of July. It's that good. I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'll leave a link down below for the slow cooker barbecue ribs. In case you don't have an Instant Pot and you only have a slow cooker, you can make these very similar ribs inside the uh, slow cooker. I'll leave all the ingredients down below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Okay, so earlier in this video, um, I told you to set your oven to broil. I know that there's a lot of folks um, in other countries that may not know what broil is. So what broil is, let's pretend this is your oven at home. There's a setting on it that will only utilize a burner that's on the top of the oven. So the way most ovens work is there's a burner at the bottom and there's a fan in the back that's gonna blow the hot air around. Well, to broil something, the heat comes from the top. So this is an air fryer that will broil, which means it's only gonna have this heating element up at the top, heat, and it's high heat. Generally, my broiler starts at 500 degrees and it's only 500 degrees. So when I put stuff in, I put it super high um, so that just the, the gap between the food and the broiler is maybe an inch or two. But that's what is meant when you hear us talk about using a broiler.